everyone and welcome to another episode of Cheers SA. My name is Jane Oshwagat, joining me my lovely co-host Steve Jaquier. Steve, we roll around again. We've had so many great shows so far and this one coming up is going to be one of the best. Yeah, you know I look back at all the shows we've done so far and with Michelle Dendecker She's such a beautiful girl, isn't she? <laughs> she is. She's Gorgeous just the, the bee's knees, Gorgeous and girl. and it was royalty. <laughs> so she's brought us back yep. to the place where she, we filmed her from. We did, we did. Jarma's Kitchen on uh, Park Terrace at Bowden. We're going to be joined by the one and only Chris Jarma, the owner. Um, his beautiful wife Linda. She's got to stay home with the kids, so she couldn't. She couldn't come. <laughs> Chris has got the tough job, he reckons, but she has, so she's That's got the kids right. at home. But um, yeah, it's going to be a great show. He's uh, an iconic name within the, the, the restaurateurs in uh, South Australia. So, you know, we'll get into him, we'll find out about his restaurant, we'll find out a bit of history, and we'll certainly find out about his food, and we'll taste it, and we'll drink some of his beautiful wine. A bit what of wine, I think, as well, Jack. That'd be great. Well, we're going to learn from the best tonight, so stay tuned. Welcome back to Cheers SA, here at the famous Jarmus Kitchen, Bowden, Park Terrace at Bowden, beautiful spot, and guess what Jane, we got a feast. So without further ado, <laughs> let's bring on the man himself, the owner of Jarmus Kitchen is Chris Jarma. let's bring him in and see what he might have for us. So, Chris. I'm, I'm, I'm going to applaud this already. Okay, so what we've got here is a traditional Austrian schnitzel, because that's my heritage. My father's Austrian, his mother was a cook, ran a hotel in Salzburg. So there's a freshly crumbed veal, which is a wiener schnitzel and chicken, chicken breast schnitzel. So you've got the traditional Austrian potato salad, cucumber salad, or if you want to go fries and a little Italian salad. So. Oh, fuck. Get a roll out of here. Yeah. So now, this is one of your main dishes here at the restaurant? Yeah, we're known for our freshly crumbed schnitzels, but we do a lot of, big, my wife's Italian, so we do a lot of pasta dishes, a um, little bit of Asian influence as well in some of our dishes as well. Is it is it always necessary to put the lemon on the schnitzel? Yes. So yes. a traditional situl, a schnitzel, you yep. squeeze the lemon over the top. Right. Don't get it in your eye. Yep. And, um, and now, they're, what does that they're, they're thin schnitzels, right. so they're not like your, your thick pub style schnitzels. You can eat plenty of them. Right. Um, this is what you would get if you went to Vienna mm. or Germany, and you can eat three, four, five of these, easy. Well, my German heritage will be absolutely lapping this up, so yeah. I'll get stuck into it, and uh, Jack, you can just continue on with the rest of the show. And my heritage from Port Adelaide. Um, <laughs> Yes, we so love a good schnitty. So you'd be used to like a palmy, yeah? <laughs> this is magnificent. It's, it just like melts in your mouth. Yeah. It's like butter almost. It's unbelievable. Yeah. And, and it's not a beef schnitzel, it's veal. So it melts in your mouth. It's thin. So we better tell everybody where you are and what you do. And so we might start here and we'll work our way back because we're at, we are here right now at Jarma's Kitchen and it is at Park Terrace at Bowden. What brought you to here? Okay, so a long, long time ago, I started at Jarmas on Kensington Road, did my apprenticeship when now, I was 14 years old. 14 years of age? Yeah. It's too early to leave school. I know. So I left after year nine, got permission, because I, I wasn't excelling at, at school at the time, and I got chosen, uh, well, I got, I got permission to leave into a full-time job with my parents when I was 14, did my apprenticeship. By the time I was 18, I was qualified. And then I, I represented Australia, believe it or not, in the Work Skill Olympics. Wow, so we, so a couple of, <laughs> couple of weeks ago, we had um, the, the one and only Michelle yeah. Dendecker. Yes. So we went like that when yeah. she walked in. So we should have done that when you walked yeah, in. Yeah, no, right? not quite the, the recognition as the sporting uh, oh, okay. Olympics, but there is a- Green jacket? Yes. I've got a green jacket, got to meet Bob Hawke back in 1991. I think we've got some yeah, photos some actually photos of, of me. Uh, yep. of, uh, of so you had, had to be under the age of 21 and there was like bricklayers, hairdressers, carpenters, I'd like to see chefs. Them. Oh no, they didn't <laughs> yeah. have to cook, did they? No. It, it was full on. Like, <laughs> and, I, it, it, and it was under the age of 21 and um, I was only 18 at the time and I remember the Austrian chef that was on the other bench alongside of me 
and in in Europe they only do a, like a three year apprenticeship, and he was like next level. Oh, okay. like, I think I finished eighth in the world. In the world, as a young little eighteen year old. Yeah, yeah. Right? that's unbelievable. Yeah, but so, you did cheat a bit because a bit of homework <laughs> said that you were at the age of ten. Yes, you were. In working at your dad, mum and dad's restaurant. Okay, yeah, but I must admit, my and first job at 10 was peeling carrots. One cent a carrot. That's very important. You've got to start and somewhere. I got one cent a carrot, got 100 carrots, I got a dollar. Went to the fish and chip shop, <laughs> played Space Invaders <laughs> five times, 20 cents a pop. Boom, boom, done. But my parents said, we have to teach us speed. So it's not about the hourly rate, it's about how quick you could work <laughs> to earn that money. So, yeah, yeah. And then at 12, something about desserts? Yeah, I was running a dessert section at, at one of their other restaurants on uh, Guja Street. At PJ, 12? PJ Schnitzel's, yeah. At 12 years yeah. Yeah. Oh So you God. showed us a, uh, a photo just before um, on your phone, but we'll put it up on the screen. So, so what were you doing at that stage? How old were you? I think that was when I started my apprenticeship at 14. Yeah. And I look at my daughter Baby. now, who's 13, my son's 10, I think. I can't imagine them going to work. Your son, yeah. Tommy? Yeah, Tommy. Tommy, he'd be into it. He'd be like, right up uh, a drain pipe, Tommy. He, 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 <laughs> he'd say, I want to be a chef. I said, no, I'm sending him to a good school, Pulteney. <laughs> I said, you will finish year 12. I will teach you how to cook, but then see where life leads. Well, Tommy, you better listen to your dad. <laughs> Following his footsteps, yeah. you're going places. So, Chris, where were you Where were you getting influences from at, at that stage? You're 14 oh, look, years my, old. Like, where, where, are you, look, where are you getting this excuse information me, I'm from? Just gonna have yeah, boy. My dad, look, obviously was my idol. Yeah. And I followed him everywhere I went. And, um, and I, I dedicated this restaurant to him because Jama's restaurant on Kensington Road was open in 1984, closed in... 2004, so 20 years. 10 years later, I found this place, uh, which was 2014, and we thought we'd reintroduce the Jama name, but in a more casual atmosphere. Although we, we can do fine dining dinners out the back, we do wine dinners, we do functions, we do traditional schnitzel, we do, uh, I married a, a lovely Italian girl, Linda, um, so I do a lot of um, Italian family type yeah, food, yeah. yeah. So yeah. we've got a good. Yeah, my, my daughter Tash, she had a birthday here, and we had it in a fi- private function area. Magnificent mm-hmm. food is just to die for. Service exemplary. It's a beautiful place. Yeah. Beautiful, beautiful it's place. Gorgeous. And it, and it really is that family restaurant where you can have the birthday parties, but you can come here for, for you know the easy breakfast as well, right through to the, the fine dining of dinner. So. Uh, I highly recommend this place. I've, I've been a couple of times myself already prior to prior to this, and I'll be coming again. That's for sure. <laughs> well, we've had a little snippet of this, mm. a little feast on this, a, a bit one. more. Yeah. I reckon we go to a break, we can finish it off, <laughs> and right. then we might come back and we'll find out what we can wash it down with. Yes, I reckon that's the way to go. Fair. Hi, and welcome back to Cheers SA here at the beautiful Jarmus Kitchen, Jane. Had a beautiful, beautiful meal before. A Viennese schnitzel. Yep. Yes, and, absolutely uh, We will need to wash it down, but I think just before we get into that, we've got a brand new sponsor on board. We do. Uh, Slow Tours, Carol has them. That's exactly yep. right. Yes, Jack Slow Tours offers a whole range of tours in Australia, New Zealand and Pacific. But Carol is excited to be part of our group, the Cheers SA group, and uh, as we venture into the SA wine region. So if you're planning a trip, at your own leisure, jump on to www.slowtours.com.au and check them out. And the first trip you'll go to? Jarmus Kitchen, I reckon. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Let's go straight here. First stop. The first stop. Yep. First stop, last we'll stop, probably. We'll give you some slow food. <laughs> oh, hey. When you drink here, you want to eat slow so yeah, you can drink Enjoy. plenty. Enjoy. Speaking of drinks, mm. what have you got for us? Okay, it would be wrong if I didn't talk about my father-in-law's vineyard, Totino Estate, and my favorite brother-in-law, Francesco, named after him and his uh, nonno. Yes. So this is the vintage 2014 Totino. Does Don know you borrowed yeah. this? Well, he's, <laughs> he's a, he's uh, just I know keep Don. This, he said, you. keep this for special people. <laughs> but this is oh, the Francesco Shiraz. 
I think you helped us uh, a few years ago. Yeah, so we built the house, didn't we? I did. Yes. Yeah. So, so yes, I know your father-in-law very well. And so I'm sure he'd this is, mind us having a beautiful. This drop. is an Adelaide Hill Shiraz. With a bit of age, so it should be alright. Good colour. Yep. Mm -hmm. Put some legging on. The wine or? Mm -hmm. Steve. I'm supposed, no, I'm supposed to say. <laughs> oh, you, you got some legs. <laughs> legs yeah. I think you're taller tall than all of us. <laughs> oh, it's oh, really? Oh, really? It's not that hard. It's only because I, I squat down all the time while she's on. I think we've got the, the level quite right here. Right, taller, <laughs> and then there's a midget over here. Yeah. Yes. Mm. No worries. But Clearly yes. not our first class. So yes. yes. <laughs> So talk, talk to us about the Tontino Estate. What's there? What okay, so um, where are they? Adelaide Hills, Paracone. So Don's been growing grapes there for about 10, 10 15 years, and the wine's getting better and better. Mm. And uh, yeah, and this Francesco, big thick bottle, deep punt. Yep, stick right. the foam on it when you yep. pour it. Beautiful. Um, good quality. Straight single vineyard Shiraz. And you drink this with anything. Yeah. 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 It's not just a meat. You, you can no, nah, it. this it's an all-day quaffer. You've got the uh, SSC, which is San Gervais Shiraz Cabernet, which is great with food. Uh, the Adelaide Hills Shiraz, they also do a Cabernet. Uh, he does a great Pinot Grigio and a Adelaide Hills Sav, Sav Blanc. And um, what sort of price point are these at, Chris? Oh, uh, bottle shop would be 20, 30 bucks. Uh, okay. Re yeah. Reasonable, yeah. very reasonable. Yeah. yeah. If I go and see Don, it'll be oh. 40 or 50 bucks. <laughs> yes. Yeah, he'd charge you more. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You'd see me coming. Ah, uh, that's such a nice drop, though. Yeah. I can actually, uh, actually feel like I would be having this with a pizza. Yes. As well. Which you're famous for here? Pizzas? Yeah, we have Fifth, Re Fifth Street Pizza down nice. just here. Yeah, and we do traditional wood oven pizza. We do a lot of functions out the back uh, where we offer pizza to share, antipasto, and then um, people move into their main course and uh, dessert. We do a lot of Italian christenings. Yeah, I bet. The 21st. <laughs> yes, yes. We over deliver on the food. We look after the hungry people of Adelaide. So yeah, we we. We've got a good following. So what are the, what are the regular items on your menu here at Jarmus Kitchen? Oh, look, you can get a great Wagyu steak here, right. reasonably priced, yep. uh, schnitzel, traditional Austrian schnitzel, pasta, our, our pasta marinara or pasta with seafood is over delivers on the seafood, like really good. Wow. Last time I was here, I loved your balls. <laughs> yeah. I, had, the, I had meatballs. The, they oh, were the unbelievable. Meatballs or the risotto balls? No, meatballs. Okay. Beautiful. Yes. Yeah. Well, Dom was in today and he wanted... He would have had meatballs. No, he wanted squid testicles. Oh, tentacles. <laughs> tentacles. <laughs> hmm. But yeah, okay. uh, I didn't have any, so... Yeah. Slip of the tongue. Well, <laughs> so... Yeah. It's unusual. He normally gets what he wants. <laughs> hey. Yeah. Hey. We do lots of fresh seafood. Yep. And uh, good quality meat from Thomas Farm Foods. Brilliant. Yep. Um, the Eura Station. Ooh, yep. Down my way. Their wagyu. Oh, yeah. 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 Millicent, is it? Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah, right. yeah, yeah. that's right. Oh, they've got the best wagyu yes, in the state. Yeah, Fabulous. okay. And, and do you just wear this for show and tell, or are you actually. Right. No, uh, no, actually. Are you in the kitchen? I am in the kitchen that's every good day. Right. You can see me, my car's parked out yep. side, and you'll see me in the kitchen every day. Okay. Breakfast, lunch, early dinner. <laughs> well, I reckon if we get. Just before we go to a break, because I do want to come back after the break and, break and speak to you about some of those little things that you also make. It's not wine and not food, but there's a few other things that you sell. Oh, and yeah. gonna, we're going to go down that track just after this, which will give Jane and I just a little bit of time just to get this down. <laughs> Cheers. 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 We, we want to push. Now, how are we going for time? Yeah, we're fine. I'm sure. Yeah. Yep. We're, about, we're up to 13, 14 yet? Uh, yeah, whereabouts? Uh, about 14. Okay, so if we just do that and we do these and it, do your jars or whatever. Yep. <laughs> yep. But do we talk about post COVID or not? Yeah, just when COVID happened. Yeah, just say when, yep. it, when it was on because right. yep. this might not go to air for three or four weeks. 
but we don't know where it's going to take us. So just yeah, tell a story that you had the um, spare oranges and yeah. did whatever you did. Yep. Yeah. You want to bring us back? Yes. <coughs> Where's my wine? Love the wine. Welcome back to Cheers SA. We are at Jama's Kitchen and joined by the man himself, Chris Jama. Thank you again for, uh, for coming onto the show. We've experienced your, your Viennese schnitzel. We've ex <laughs> experienced the Tontino wines. Now, you're actually introducing us to a few things that you actually make in house and sell as well. So. Okay, so yeah, I've been doing the sticky balsamic for quite a while now about 15, 20 years. Wow. It goes pretty well in food land and IGAs. Okay. We still bottle it by hand, make it in-house. Uh, great on breakfast, cheese, whatever. And the legend herself, Michelle Dendecker. Oh, she loves it. She absolutely <laughs> thinks that's better than Christmas. I get emails from Sydney saying, oh, can I get this in Sydney? And it's like, because oh, someone sent it to me as a present. I'm like, oh, so I do need to take that to the next level, but right. one day. But during COVID, I had all these oranges left over because we couldn't sell them for orange juice once they shut us down. So we're post-COVID now. I, I, I made it, I turned it into Jarmalade. <laughs> my, pre, my apprentice, Jackson, came up with the name. So Jarmalade, Creative. orange marmalade. We don't have a label yet, but come in. And um, it's my first time ever what? making marmalade. You're a freak, aren't you? That yeah. is, a, that is the light. Yeah. Wow. That is beautiful. It's caramelised, yeah. orange. Yeah. That, yeah, I'm not so, a marmalade fan, but that actually smells okay. Yeah. Yeah, I'd first give that a go. First time ever making marmalade. I'd give that a go. So come in. Yep. We'll give you a, a jar of marmalade. <laughs> to And the balsamic. No, yep. Don't leave without it. <laughs> Jane. Jeez. Chris, thank can't, you. Can't thank, thank you, you enough. Thank it's been you. it's been awesome here. Uh, we've certainly tasted a few of the bits and pieces that he's got on offer here. I'm sure that we'll be back here to taste the rest. Please get down here anytime you can. It's on uh, Park Terrace at Bowden. You'll see the man himself, and when the owner is behind there, you know then it's going to be authentic and it's going to be right off the top shelf. And Jane. We're coming back here. We are, we are. Fabulous South Australian business with fabulous South Australian produce as well. How could you go wrong? It's been great. Thank you very much, Chris. Thank you. Cheers, Cheers SA. SA. Cheers, SA.